Hey Globalites, welcome to Down Day Sunday, a weekly video series where I tell you about a recent experience, answer your questions, and raffle off a postcard. And this week my recent experience is that we reached 2,000 subscribers! Congratulations to everybody, congratulations to me! Yay, 2,000 subscribers! I'm so happy that this community is growing. If you are part of the first 1,000 subscribers, let me know down in the comments below and thank you so much for sticking along with this ride. It's been crazy and I have really appreciate all the wonderful comments and insights that you've had. I've been able to learn from you and hopefully through listening about my experiences you are taking away something too. So thank you so much. And if you're part of the new 1000 subscribers, thank you so much for subscribing and welcome! And if you're just getting to know me and what this channel is all about, I made a playlist of some videos that I think capture my story well and answer some questions about me. So you can go ahead and click up in the card right there to learn more. And thank you for subscribing and leaving your feedback every week and uh, let's just keep it going and let's keep growing. And if you know of a friend who is traveling soon and needs some travel advice, send them over to this channel and hopefully there'll be something here for them to uh, sink their teeth into. Okay, so like the last time we hit a 1000 benchmark, I'm going to make this entire video a question and answer. And we have a few questions, so we have to get right into it. B Haven writes, how are you gonna be able to vote if you are traveling overseas? And in case you international viewers don't know, in November there's a huge presidential election in the United States and it's a pretty crazy one and I'm sure you're all like, how did it get this crazy? And uh, Americans don't even know. <laughs> so, yeah. Behaven, I am planning to vote and I am going to be actually in the Bay Area in the month of October which allows me to register for an absentee ballot and then pick up the ballot and then mail it in. Karma Tsio writes, I have a question concerning phones and SIM cards. How exactly does that work overseas? Do you still use your US provider and phone? How about rates and fees? Or if you're staying in one place long enough, is it easier to get a local phone? Karma, it sounds like you want a ton of information and I don't think I have time to give it to you right now, so I think in the future I'm gonna do uh, a, a video about phone plans and your options overseas. But just to give you a brief synopsis about what I do, I have a US provider, I still have my US provider, I have T-Mobile. T-Mobile's basic package allows you to get free unlimited data internationally in many different countries because T-Mobile is part of a network of cellular providers all over the globe and certain countries you can go there and you'll have data on your phone. Also T-Mobile is nice because it has Wi-Fi calling so if I'm connected to a Wi-Fi spot and the connection is strong enough I can make phone calls to the US for absolutely free. Now if you want to know more information about their rates and fees go to their website. This is not an advertisement for them so uh, you'll have to find out more information about what kind of packages you can get. But there have been countries where T-Mobile hasn't worked like Vietnam and Laos. In those countries I just had my phone unlocked and I was able to put in local SIM cards and they worked great. Okay and the next two questions are about Chiang Mai specifically so if you don't care about that maybe skip ahead like I don't know a minute two minutes. The first question is in response to my video about traveling to a new country or making a border crossing and what you need to do to prepare for that journey. And so David Helfen writes, any advice specific to Chiang Mai before entering? And I think what he means by that is before entering Thailand through Chiang Mai. And David, entering through Chiang Mai isn't really a unique experience because one, it's not a border town so you, the only way you can enter Thailand through Chiang Mai is to fly into Chiang Mai directly. And all five tips still apply. The only thing I would say is that the airport's super small and Wi-Fi was really frustrating to try and get on and I, it didn't work. If you want to catch a cab and you don't have a lot of stuff and you're on a budget, don't catch the cabs at the airport. Literally the airport is really really close to the old city of Chiang Mai so you could just walk out the airport doors, make a right, go down the street and find another taxi or song tiao to take you to your accommodation. And DMBS Border writes, do you have any recommendations for things to do on a rainy day in Chiang Mai? Most of the things in Chiang Mai that's like a to-do 
and that tourists do are outdoors, whether it be like traveling from temple to temple to visit those, or going to see national parks, or just exploring the old city. I would say that if you're in Chiang Mai and it's raining and it's raining hard, then try to enjoy the town as a city and not necessarily a tourist attraction because there's lots of cool cafes and restaurants and malls and all those places are unique experiences and cultural experiences even though you can do all those things back at home they're different in a way and you can enjoy some really good food and enjoy some really good people watching and I, I mean like there could be museum recommendations but I never went to a museum and I don't I can't really think of anything else that's particularly indoor that's not like a dining or lounging experience. So if anybody has any other suggestions, go ahead and leave it down in the comments. And that's all the time we have for questions this week. If you want your question answered in a future Down Day Sunday, go ahead and leave it in the comments down below and maybe I'll answer it. And if there's enough questions on a particular topic, or just like something really complicated that you want answered, I might make a whole separate video about it. So you never know, just keep leaving that feedback down there. And as we do at the end of every Down Day Sunday, I'm gonna be raffling off a postcard to one of you. And I've been walking around all day and I don't have the fish on me, so I'm just gonna to cut to the drawing. And the winner is... Joey Michael. Congratulations! If you want a postcard from me, go ahead and leave a comment down below with the hashtag of the place you think I'm in right now. And here's a hint. Have you ever seen anything like this before in your life? And let me reiterate, it doesn't have to be the right hashtag. Just participation alone gets you into the raffle, so don't worry about whether or not you're right. This past week, I show you what it's like to randomly meet some new local friends in the town of Dalat, Vietnam. And coming up on the channel this week, I'm going to be showing you a very strange house in Dalat. It's a pretty, pretty crazy house. Thank you all so much for watching. Like, subscribe, and follow, and I'll see you in the next Down Day Sunday. And until then, get off the couch and go do great things. Bye! So I was just walking around and exploring Dalat for the first time, and then these two just kind of approached me and were like, we want to practice English with you. And I was like, well, sure, why not? So this is... My name, name is Patrick. It's nice. Oh.